The events of the past decade have placed an enormous burden on the US military and diplomatic officials whose jobs it is to keep us safe and well. 9-11 brought terrorism to our homeland. Two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have placed around 60 million people under the care of our military and civilian personnel. Recurrent outbreaks of new and dangerous infectious diseases tested our ability to detect and respond to pandemics. The commitment of Americans to tackle the big health challenges of our day, HIV AIDS, malaria and TB, has elevated global health to a new and costly US foreign policy and development objective. For our leaders, meeting these commitments is not only the right thing to do, it also makes sense on a strategic level. Well, I think health and security are very closely uh, tied together. Uh, certainly on a very basic level, we recognize that the, the health of a country is clearly linked to their prosperity, uh, their productivity, really, and so their, uh, their economic well-being, and that's key to stability. The Global Health Policy Center at CSIS wants to understand what the lessons of the last decade teach us about the nexus between health and security. We have turned to those who know best, the senior men and women in our government and military who have grappled with these issues in their leadership positions. Admiral William Fallon, former head of both the US Pacific and Central Commands, spearheaded military engagement on public health during a 40-year career. He has led our efforts. The military has great capability to respond. I would say that the uh, military is much better suited to the uh, emergency response. That's the, the forte. Uh, we have terrific logistics capability. We have uh, an accumulated medical uh, and medical related capability. We have found that a decade of military and health challenges have spurred several innovative solutions particularly in the way we provide medical care for servicemen and women wounded on the battlefield. We learned in those trauma environments that uh, controlling the temperature and the hydration of that person actually made a big difference in the survivability. So now it's actually fundamentally changed emergency medicine even in the states. Despite our growing understanding of the special role that health plays in global security, how we are organized as a government and military complicates matters. You have your military medical that you can deploy all over the world, but there's so much more than the nation's capacity that is not, quote, deployable. If we really believe that medical, as one example, is a true um, differentiator and a strategic uh, asset in application, then why wouldn't we have more than just the U.S. military configured in a way to be able to deploy? We at CSIS hope to prompt a discussion on how the United States can best put health and security at the center of policy debate and how our efforts to promote health abroad can build good relationships and keep us safer at home. If you look at the potential for many countries, which right now we don't have a very good relationship, with but have the capability to go talk about non-threatening topics such as basic health, HIV AIDS, non-communicable diseases, these types of things. This is a reason that we should support very closely both uniformed and non-uniformed United States capability to go into a country and help them develop their health system and create a friend out of what potentially could become an enemy. We hope you can join the conversation by going to our website at www.smartglobalhealth.org where you can find a copy of our report, Global Health as a Bridge to Security.